Hello. Good to see you there. Uh, good to see you digitally through the screen. Hello, Christian. Hello, Dion. How are you guys? Uh, I thought, Josh, we were going to get from you a guten tag. It sounded like the start of a guten tag, but uh, alas, it wasn't. <laughs> how, how, does a, how does a guten tag start? Uh, it starts like Josh started it, but it doesn't end like that. <laughs> we, should do a, <laughs> we should do a... Or, <laughs> we should do a really guten tag. <laughs> It's, it's, when, it's, yeah, it's something that encompasses the whole day. We yeah. Have a really good day. What is a good tag? Um, um, also, if you see some graffiti and it's just really, really great, it's a good tag. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Pretty good. That's awesome. That's Josh, the, did, did you have a tag when you were younger? Um, I used to write my initials, JP, in like a cool way. So I would do the J and then off the back neck of the J, I would do the curve of the P. Oh, that's Amazing. interesting. Actually, fun fact about my signature, the D in my signature is exactly or inspired by my mum's D in her signature. <laughs> Surely we all take inspiration from our parents' signatures, right? Mine oh, yeah, is identical I mean, to it. my dad's. Really? Yeah, identical, it's identical but, but it doesn't I, even yeah, say I kept, Christian. Yeah, I kept, <laughs> great. Um my my tag um at school Dion was oil rig. It was <laughs> Which, which stands for oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. Christian, surely you were trying not to get bullied at school, not to increase the chances <laughs> of that happening. I was already an overweight ethnic, so. <laughs> but you were, but you were, um, weren't you like a captain of something? Yes. So you respected, yes. you were bullied and respected. At the same time, yes. <laughs> Great thing on your tombstone, bullied and <laughs> um, respected. The other thing I wanted to talk about is I was speaking to my mum yesterday and she was telling me of a uh, an attempted rooibos. I don't use the word attempted because it's it's not been going well, but I thought I'd bring it up. You know those coffee pods and you get your packet of them, like, you know, 10 in a packet or whatever. Mm. She bought one of these from uh, a local supermarket and a couple of them were like hard and had like broken whatever. However they break, they broke, right? And they were rock hard. So she took them back and was like, oh, hey, these, these ones are busted. And the a guy's like, well, where's the rest of them? It's like, well, how are you meant to know? <laughs> That they're broke, like they don't work until you get to the broken ones, right? That aren't working. Yeah, yeah. And then, so then he's like, well, you have to send it back to the company. So then mom's emailed the company being like, hey, I got this product, this thing. Can you send us a photo, please? Okay. So keep in mind through all of this, they cost less than about five bucks. For how, can you, how can you send a photo of something feeling rock hard? <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, Great. can you... Can you post it out to us? And it's just like, and then the worst, and we'll send you a voucher. Shocking. Just for something so cheap that could have been such a great customer experience. They've just, they've just done Hang it on. wrong, haven't they? How much was the voucher worth? I, I presume it would be the cost of one of their products. I don't know what, I don't know what the voucher is. If you go to the supermarket and go, hey, I have a voucher for this specific company. You know what, Josh? That is not something that you would consider a big prize. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That's well, one for those in YouTube chat. Thank you so much. We'll get started soon. Uh, Probably I the think... only reference we might have to big prize, actually. Um, um, I can see in the chat that there have been a few references to the big oh, yeah. prize. For those oh, of yeah. you who aren't aware of the big prize, mm -hmm. um, you'll have to stick around right till the end because there will be no further mention of said big prize until the big reveal of the big prize at the end <laughs> of the patch. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, just Josh, in, uh, in regards to that failed uh, failed rooibos, I ordered uh, some gin uh, via Dan Murphy's, via eBay on Dan Murphy's. I ordered it and was really excited. It took ages to arrive, open up the packet, and it was a bottle of vodka. Um, so I called them and I, well, I first messaged them and I was getting to this back and forth. I was like, oh, I can't be bothered with this. So I just called them and I said, hey, I would actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'd like to keep this vodka because it's good vodka. I don't have any vodka at home and just post and just post out the, the gin. That's fine. They were like, that's cool. Just keep the vodka. You don't have to pay for it. No problem. What? How was that? They just left. They just said, look, we fucked up. There's the, there's the vodka and we'll post you out the gin as well. I am on a streak. I am on did an you, absolute streak. Did you have to send a photo? Nope. They nope. took your word. They took my word. Yeah. Try it out. Dan oh. Murphy's. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I ordered a clear spirit. Which one? Uh, gin? <laughs> but yeah, so it was, it was just, it was such a good result. What are people saying here in the live chat? Just before we crack into the episode, um, Kyle is saying there's a big price. <laughs> um, lots of, uh, 
you know what's disappointing is that the big prize has been referenced for a number of weeks and I got absolutely nothing and it wasn't until I revealed that the prize was big and I emphasized how big it was <laughs> that people started paying attention. Can I just say, Barbara in the chat says, uh, that reminds me of my last share house where we had a possum scratching in the wall and the real estate agent asked, asked us to send us a photo. <laughs> Do you pass the camera to the possum? Do you mind taking that? <laughs> just oh, an audio God. clip. And it's just them doing it. Going. Um, Jasmine, great question. How does Dion keep getting free stuff? Um, join a podcast, Jasmine. <laughs> it helps a lot. It helps with the motivation. Um, but yeah, good luck with everyone with the free prize. Um, we, we wish you all the best with it. Was there anything else we wanted to cover before we cracked into the show? Uh, no, I think we're good to go. If, so if, let's... Oh, hang on. Sorry, Josh. If you are... <laughs> If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel or yeah. like this video, please yeah. go do that right now. It's very easy. Just click the thumbs up button. It means absolutely nothing to you, but it means a little bit to us. Well, Thanks, well yeah, but if you, if you have a mouse that has limited sort of clicks left in it, don't click. But yeah, please subscribe <laughs> to our... Oh, you know what? If it's, you like, subscribe... it's like a human heart. A mouse has 50,000 <laughs> clicks in its lifetime. <laughs> Um, yeah, actually, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel right now, if you click on subscribe right now, your name will flash up on the screen. That is a pretty damn good incentive. Rather than doing it from the goodness of your heart, your name will flash up. Um, the other thing is that if you know that anyone is uh, like a bit down at the moment or needs a bit of a cheer up, um, send them the link to this live stream and, and hopefully, you know, they can come along and, and find Patrick as well. But for now, let's start the show. <laughs> Wow. How should I use the best space under my bed? If questions like this have crossed your mind, no, I'm going to start that again. You know what? I'm going to start that all over again. I'm going to start it all over again. Because what I keep doing is I keep, in, in, I write this out and then I put it in tiny lettering and I can't read a fucking thing. <laughs> it's like you're watching it from the stands at the MCG, isn't it, DR? <laughs> <laughs> Got to be front row in the box. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Let's do this again. How should I best use the space under my bed? If questions like this have crossed your mind, then you're in good company. Today we'll be taking a closer look at some of the daily habits and social conventions that make up the monotony of life. Let's try and remove the gluey residue left by a sticker and let the residue ruin your fingernail. Grab your knitting needles and a blanket because it's time for three old friends to sit around and so in Need Dion in my bedroom with Christian. Welcome to Patchford. And Josh. Welcome to Patchford. Now, before before we get started, I uh, just wanted to let you guys know this will be a bit of a bumper episode because we're taking a bit of a break. Uh, we'll explain a bit more uh, at the end of the show, but just know we've got a big episode planned for you guys because we'll be uh, stopping Patrick for a little while. But um, yeah, more, more at the end of the show. Um, now, for actually, before we get started, um, a bit of a, it is a bit of a bone to pick with you, Christian. Sure. Um, now, something's been happening in our house. Pick. Oh, wow. Okay? Um, something's been happening in our house is that you, um, the way you put the tea towels away. So, Dion, <laughs> you have tea towels, right? You're drying dishes, whatever. Where would you traditionally place a tea towel once you've finished drying? Where does it normally live? Like a, a used and currently in use tea towel. Uh, currently in use tea towel always lives uh, on the little rack of, for the, where, the where the oven where the oven the is arm yeah of the oven laid yep. over the oven the oven yep okay so these are the these are the places that they have gone since Krishna's <laughs> moved into this house yep. we've gone laying over all the wet dishes on the drying rack not a huge issue mm -hmm. uh, laying over the stove top hanging half down <laughs> over in front of the oven uh, and then flat out. Just on the kitchen, fully laid out on the kitchen bench, and then continually used, laid out on the kitchen bench. There's been crumbs thrown on it. There's been chopping boards put on it, all kinds of different things. And then what happens? You get a filthy tea towel. Christian, explain yourself. All right, Josh. I To start with, I'm sick of people telling me how I should be using tea towels. They, yeah. do, no, they do not have a discreet purpose that you have to use them in X particular way. Oh, well, tea is a oh. bit of a giveaway there, but I think you mean it. <laughs> What's the giveaway? <laughs> uh, to wipe up tea, surely. What is a tea? What is a tea towel? What's the purpose of a tea towel? That, that's Why is right. it called a that's tea right, towel? Dion. Okay, for a me, a tea towel. <laughs> for me, a tea towel should be used pretty much exclusively for drying wet dishes, drying wet clean dishes. Oh, that's it, Josh. Drying wet clean dishes. 
Okay, so I don't, I don't mind a, a maybe a little bit of a dry your fingers, but primarily pri- its primary function is to dry wet clean dishes. Okay, so there are, there are two separate issues here. The first is obviously the issue that you've um, pointed out with where I leave the tea towels. Now, I like to leave the tea towel over the dishes after they've been after they uh, when they're drip drying because that allows for circulation of air to hit. Wait a second, Josh. There's two. <laughs> there's two reasons. Without, because I don't want to fold it over itself and hang it over the oven where it's touching itself and it's going to take longer to dry. So I want to make sure that it is one sheet that has as much surface area exposed to the air that it will dry faster. But also it doubles up as hiding the dishes that are drying. Okay. It's, uh, Josh, I mean, like I, I, I would love to agree with you at this in this situation. I don't know why, but I absolutely love when Christian puts a tea towel over dishes. It is it's like I, it's like a home that, that I that, wish that, I would have grown up in. A day you see that is a good tag. It's a, <laughs> it is a good day. It's it's it, I don't know what it is. It fe- I just know that I'm sure Christian, you observe your mum doing it. I'm sure we've probably talked about this in multiple patches. But for me, I think that the the bit that I don't get is that like I want to find out the inherent purpose of the tea towel. Why is it called a tea towel? Why isn't the towel when I go to the bathroom? Why isn't it called a body towel or a shower towel? Why is it just why 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 are we just using well, generic towel? Well, they do have hand towels. Yeah, that's true. Which, so, which are small, which are smaller towels for your hand. That makes sense. Samantha in the YouTube chat has suggested that a tea towel represents tea as in dinner. So it's like a dinner towel. Okay. I think oh. that a tea towel should be flexible. It should be able to clean up spills. And the reason, Josh, that I put it beneath a chopping board as I'm as I'm chopping on the board is so that it can capture the spills over the chopping board. Okay. So when- I could have given you an out then if you said the correct answer to that. The reason I put a tea towel under the chopping board is to stop it sliding around. I would have given it you that. It does not, that as well. Not to catch spills and stuff because you've got a clean, dry wipe surface there that you could just wipe it with a chucks, Christian. No, we Josh. Have a chucks. Okay. It's about you've how you're defining the tea chucks. towel. <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm chucks. Saying- Chucks are disgusting wet things. Yeah, they are. They are. They're always disgusting. Wet disgusting. Yeah, yeah. And yep. they have the clear purpose of cleaning things up. The yeah. dryness of the tea towel is purely for dr- clean things. You shouldn't be getting a tea towel dirty. Where, Why where not? Do you think the, where do you think the brand Chucks came from? Like, is that is that after is that is that after someone named Charlie, or is it just oh, just just chucks it just chucks it over there? Oh, sorry, what? Chuck it over there? No, no, no. Chucks it over there. <laughs> um, I think Josh, my, my... There's, there's nothing wrong with getting a tea towel dirty because it goes in the wash. The point is to have, and I don't know whether this is because my grandfather owned like a, an Italian Manchester store that sold. We had endless numbers of tea towels growing up. Tea towels up. covered in plastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're the good tea towels for visitors. <laughs> so, Josh, where would you where would you like Christian to put these? Where, where what are his options? Does he have a few options? I think over the over the arm of the oven's great. I, I don't mind over the top of the dishes. I, I'm less worried about my my main concern is it's being used to clean things up and to be get to get dirty mm-hmm. in the kitchen. I don't think it should be getting dirty. I don't think it should be used in in a tidy up fashion. I think that's what the chucks is for. <laughs> and, and you can you can squeeze out a chucks and it's practically dry. It's an interesting point, Christian, because ultimately, if you're using it for cleaning, it contaminates. When Josh is doing the dishes and you know drying the dishes, it contaminates that process. What do, what does jo- how does Josh how do you expect Josh dries dishes now? We don't dry the dishes though. Why we, we dry, dry the we we dry the dishes on the rack? They dry. Do you have a pot, mate. A big pot that doesn't I fit mean, on there. You're drying that uh, straight away. A fry yeah, pan dry straight the, away. Dry it with the tea towel. My tea towel. What if it's not filthy? <laughs> it's not filthy. The so I keep it beneath the chopping board for the spills. I'm talking about capsicum seeds. I'm talking about off cuts of onion. You and then when you take off the chopping board, you pick up, you put the four corners together, and then you you and then you, you s- run away from home. You put it on the edge of the stick. <laughs> Um, so the other day, uh, after about 10 good long years uh, and hassling of my uh, girlfriend, I decided to finally clean underneath uh, my bed. So w- what I've basically done is since I since I was a kid, I have moved the, the contents of like basically it's just all this electrical shit, like cables and all this old electrical stuff that I just didn't want to get didn't want to get rid of and I've moved it from house to house and finally it's landed in the house that I live in now underneath my bed and finally I like 
sorted through it. And it really didn't take a long time. But my God, there was some stuff there that I was just like, why have I kept this for such a long time? So it's a combination of cables and hard drives and it's basically all these electronic things that were stored in three big plastic boxes. And um, on a side note, my girlfriend had this genius idea. So you know the fishing tackle boxes, you know the clear plastic boxes with all the dividers in them? Yeah. She was like, hey, let's buy these big ones and just put all of your things in there. We can sort it out. So anyway, ended up getting it sorted out. But I really wanted to ask you guys and really wanted to like get Patrick to really reflect today <laughs> on um, – what do you have under your bed? Does it need to be there? And just chuck, chuck the fucking stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> the Christian, most, what do you think? The most, the most bizarre thing that I've always found that lives under my bed are x-rays. I don't. <laughs> what? I, because <laughs> what are you this makes perfect sense. There's absolutely nowhere for anyone to store x-rays. And, <laughs> and there's absolutely no reason for us to have them. Don't yeah. give us x-rays at the end of our appointment. What do you want us to do with them? It's unbelievable. Like a- it's not digitized. Why an x-ray? Why are they giving you hard copy x-rays? They're giving you an A1 of, of your bloody legs. They're like, don't need it. Too big. It's too big. <laughs> Christian, what, why, why are you storing them under your bed? Sure. Where- like, you store them flat? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Where else is flat enough and big enough in your house? Hang Correct. on. How big are your x-rays? Are they actually the AO ones, the poster size ones? <laughs> Dion, my x-rays it's are one huge. One. <laughs> it's one to one. Because, that, Christian, you, you, have, you probably have it because you, you did something quite bad to your leg when you were younger, didn't you? So you've probably got this probably a lot steeped in these x-rays. You probably don't want to get rid of them because I reckon someday you think to yourself, hey, I might need this if something happens. They might need to go back and have a look at them. Well, that's the thing. I have no – that's why I don't give them to me because I don't know whether they're still relevant after two years. Is my leg going to look the same under x-ray vision? Hey, I've got a question. X-ray vision. Is, is, it, is an What's x-ray man going to think? <laughs> My God, you've changed. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. If you don't want to keep hold of an x-ray, I'm just wondering, is an x-ray um, regarded as a soft plastic? <laughs> <laughs> Straight down to the supermarket. It'd be so great if x-rays had a Ziploc bag on the top as well. <laughs> the, only, the only thing that I know how to read on an x-ray is how much poo you have in your, in your collar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's it. That's it. Because once my dad had an x-ray and he was like, oh, the doctor told me this is all poo. And I was like, great. Okay. So that's it. That's all I look for now. <laughs> um, I love this. One of the, one of the, my favorite things of doing these, um, these podcasts now is the YouTube live streams. And we've just got, um, Jules just says x-rays are digitized. I just love that things can get cleared up so quickly <laughs> on the spot when I said that they couldn't. Um, do, do you want yeah. me to go get them? Yeah. <laughs> I reckon, Christian, I reckon if you can get, are they under your bed now? Because if you no, can get them now. I've, because they, because I've just moved into this place and I decided, you know, those x-rays, they're going into the bin. <laughs> is it? Yeah, x-ray, it is a weird thing the way that they give the, like, clearly the x-rays are not for you. Yet they go to you, they go, take this to somebody who knows how to read it. You go, all right, could you just send it to them yourself? No, yeah. no, you've got to do it. You're the courier. Yeah. Actually, I'm just going to, I'm just going to try one thing out with our producer. Producer, if you could just um, get your finger on the buzzer. Um, Christian just said x-rays into the bin. I don't think we've ever given him the sound effect. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But for me, in terms of my bed, it's largely, I have a very low bed. So I'm not fitting tubs or boxes under it. I've got about, let's say, I don't know, four, four inches or something. So yep. all that I have is pretty much old show posters when we've printed far too many posters or a festival gets cancelled and yeah, and we don't, and we've got all these posters. So a lot of old show posters, a lot of old flyers, that's about it. I, I used to, it's pretty much mainly been that for like the last 10 odd years or something, because I think it all, it all started when I first moved out and I lazily didn't, and I don't know if I've talked about this podcast before. I had the mattress. I didn't have a bed frame at the time. And so I was, I was living mattress on floor, like some, mm-hmm. like, and it was, yeah. I was like, this is hell. I cannot, I cannot maintain this. This is disgusting. It's disgraceful. Yep. A week goes by. Like, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Anyway, really? so I couldn't keep anything under my bed. So it was all this stuff that I was used to keeping under my bed. I had to get rid of it or put it on a shelf somewhere. So I think that that really set a tone for not not really keeping a lot of stuff under the bed. I thought you were going to tell us how uncomfortable it was still trying to sleep with the mattress on the floor and have things under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Christian, but I wanted to I wanted to dig a bit deeper. I wanted to get your your view on 
What is under the bed storage good for? I mean, some would say absolutely nothing, but what, what's, uh, what, what's, it's <laughs> a shocking reference. Um, but what is it, what is it actually good for? Like, what should you be storing under there? Cause recently I've been looking at bed frames that have like a big gas lift thing on it and you lift up the whole oh. mattress and have this amazing storage underneath. I feel like it is under the bed storage is lost space. And it's like, well, we live where we live in smaller apartments, I guess in, in, um, in Melbourne, um, yeah, we got, we got to maximize yeah. space. So what what's the idea? What is it? What's it for? I think, linen? I, I think oh that's a great idea, Dion. Honestly, Thanks very if, much. if you had if you had um dedicated storage under the bed, like that was built into the frame itself, yep. then you may as well utilize it with uh, I think bags, backpacks, large bags, shoes. Shoes. I think shoes is very popular. Shoes is a good bed. one. Linen, no, but, towels. No, but shoes, shoes is no, I don't huge. know. Shoes are, <laughs> shoes are okay, but like I feel like you want something. I feel like under the bed is good for permanent storage, like camping equipment and, and stuff that you don't use that oh, often. No. Camping really? equipment. What do you, no, that's do you a have, shed. Do you have a tent? Do you have your fishing rod <laughs> under your bed? No I, no, I didn't have the space though. It's either that or my parents' place. You Why go sleep. You go sleep. So you go sleep fishing in the middle of the night. You <laughs> sit up on the side of the bed, cast a light out. I don't think it could be anything like that. I, I know what you mean, Dan. You're getting it. It should be long-term storage. I yep. think it. I think it's. It's so long term though that you're never really getting it. I think that's the stuff that ends up under the bed. It's stuff that you've accumulated over time. Maybe it's souvenirs, mementos, mm. and it's really not getting used like ever. Well, Christian, you own and operate your own self-storage business. Um, do you understand the concept of that sort of storage? Because it seems nuts that you've got excess stuff and you go, you know what? I'm going to look into this enough to pay someone a monthly fee. I don't want to put you out of business, but pay someone a Dion, monthly Dion, fee. please stop. Please stop. <laughs> No, I just think it's a really strange, that idea of that self-storage, I think it's a yeah. really strange idea. Like just, if you've got too much stuff, clear it out. But maybe but, that's naive. Maybe maybe I'm just no, lucky I've got folks I can dump stuff out. Exactly right. That's what it is. We're lucky enough to have somewhere to dump our stuff, but things accumulate and you don't, once you've invested money into buying that thing, even if you're only going to use it one more time in the future, it doesn't make sense to throw it out. Even, Do you like, know what? Do you know what's really weird though, Christian? When I went last last time I went to your house and I went to the, like your folks' house, went to the garage. There's a lot of stuff in there. It hasn't been like it hasn't been sorted. Like lots and lots of stuff. And I was thinking to myself, that is kind of like if people at your self storage business found out that you guys didn't know how to st store storage, it's kind <laughs> of like it's kind of like a psychiatrist's son being a total nut job. And you're kind of like, well, hang on, what how are you does that not work? <laughs> Mate, we're leasing out the the garage at the moment. <laughs> Branch. Yeah. <laughs> um, so previously, as a, I guess it's a bit of a spin-off of the Roivers Challenge. I can't believe we haven't used that word uh, in relation to high team. Um, we have uh, developed a bit of a concept where we write into either a, a, a company or a person or an inanimate object, and we start by saying high team. And, and this week, I'm going to kick it off with high team. Hi, eyeglasses industry. I have considered everything in the world and I cannot wrap my head around why glasses frames are so expensive. Custom lenses I get, but frames are literally just plastic. Yes, they call them acetate, but acetate is just plastic. Please stop <laughs> making me feel like I'm buying a cheap, shocking plastic for $200. It's an awful feeling. 2020 cricket regards, Dion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, I guess I'll send my letter. Hi, small tear in my movie ticket team. <laughs> you are a completely unnecessary part of the transaction between myself and the employee who lets me into the cinema. Surround sound regards, Christian. <laughs> All right, I'll set off mine as well. Hi, Cyan Inc. team. Why is it always you who runs out? I'm fed up with not being able to print because of you. I didn't even print in colour, ever. <laughs> However, shout outs to Magenta and Yellow. Ink uh -huh. level, low regards, Josh. <laughs> Christian, <laughs> would you like to start this one? Sure. <laughs> Josh, Dion, problem, no problem. I'm sorry. I thought we were going, uh, I thought we were going to be talking about uh, me watching trains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> we could do that. I must sure. offer a different run sheet to you guys then. <laughs> yeah, you must. No, no, I think we're up to no problem. Uh, Josh, you, you can you can do problem, no problem. Uh, yeah, so problem, no problem. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, Christian Dion, problem, no problem. Leaving the fridge door open as you walk back and forth to the kitchen. Christian, problem, no problem. No problem. Dion, problem, no problem. No problem. Yes. No problem. Yes, Josh. I think if you're, I think big problem. I think big problem leaving the fridge door open when you're going back. I think every time you leave and walk away from the fridge, yeah. you need to be closing the fridge. Why? What's the reasoning for it? Just because it's a shit rule you've come up with? <laughs> no, because what what is the fridge's job to keep the interior of the fridge cool, right? And it regulates that temperature. And yeah, and what is your job? It. What's your job to shut the fuck up, leave the fridge open and go back and forth? <laughs> So we're not letting all the cold air escape and it's not having to work harder to keep the fridge cool. That's, that's why I'm helping it do its job. <laughs> Christian's lost it. Um, I, just think, I just think that these fridges, we don't know what goes into them. They're, uh, sure, they're, sure, they're bloody heavy. They are, fridges, this is the first point to make. Fridges are so heavy. Have you ever tried to move a big fridge? They are impossible to move. Um, so that's the first point. But they are made. They 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 are made to premium quality. And Josh, if you don't think, I mean, Josh, do you have a problem if you went to Antarctica, um, getting out of the car and you know heating up heating up the snow caps? Like, what what's the problem here? Surely it's just gonna like what's it gonna. <laughs> What's it I would do? have a big issue if I had a heater box and I lived in Antarctica and I opened the heater box and it started blowing heat air Josh, into Antarctica. Josh, okay, so if I am if I'm going to get some if I'm going to put things back in the fridge, right? Yeah. If if I'm taking a cost benefit analysis of this, it is more of an inconvenience to have the door constantly shut and me with my arms full having to open it and then put something in. Yeah. Rather than just leaving it open for the 30 seconds that I'm going to be 30? using it. 30? I thought you were going to say five. No, Absolutely no, no, not. How much? No. is fine. How quickly do you think things warm up? Okay. All <laughs> I, I, I'll give you, if you know, say say you're putting things back in the fridge, right? If, you're, if you know exactly what you're grabbing on each trip and you're not thinking and you're not walking around, it's like, I'm going to get this thing, this thing, this thing, and you're straight back and forth, I'll allow it. But if there is, if you go put stuff in, leave it open. Wait, wait, give back, us a scenario. Go, give it, Josh, give us the proper scenario that would happen. We need, so we need you've to, got, you've to got hone in. On the bench, right? You've just made a sanger. You've got your milk for your glass of milk. You've got your butter out. You've got your mayo. You've got a bunch of veggies, right? Yeah. So you grab the milk. You walk over to the fridge. You open the fridge. That goes back in. I yep. would close it again. But... You're going back, you're grabbing the butter, you're grabbing a capsicum, you're going back to the fridge. Where did the capsicum come from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you worried about though, Josh? Like, what's the concern? Is it's the concern with the integrity? Energy. It's using up more energy. You shouldn't just leave the fridge ajar. Not the first time. The room. Not the first time Josh has brought this up. Christian <laughs> overusing energy with the, with the heater on his feet. Um, Josh, have you observed Christian leaving the, the fridge open? During summer, exclusively. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, it's hot today. I'll open the fridge up. <laughs> How else are you going to get cold? <laughs> That's great. Christian no, buys it's... a little bar fridge for his calves. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something I noticed because I realized I will, I will really heavily err on the side of fridge closed as much as possible. I feel guilty when I, I, t I peek in the fridge for too long. If I'm like looking for oh, something, I don't quite know what I want. I'm like, ah, dumb. Josh, I'm like, I got to close this. I got to close is it. it? But the thing is that what I don't understand is how you can take such a firm line on this without having the, the concern of being worried about every other part in your life that you're not conserving energy. Yeah. Um, it's a good point, but I, I think you're probably better to just take what you can get, right? So if that's if that's the little thing that I want to do to to put my, my green stamp on the globe, close yep. the fridge more often. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult. I've got a high bar. <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what I did recently though? I I decided for no reason. Every time I've always bought like every uh, like point in my life, I've always had a shit fridge. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna fucking. I'm not gonna buy a new one because you're a nut job if you buy a new fridge or a new car or a new car. But I I said, look, I'm gonna buy one for four four hundred and fifty bucks or something. And I bought it and and I upsized. And now I have an oversized fridge, which is the best thing in the world. It's not even. The <laughs> It's not even the fridge that's the best thing. It's the amount of freezer space. I can, I, like, I can go out. I could go to to the to the pristine waters of Tasmania, and I could catch as many salmon as I like, and I could freeze them all, put them in the freezer, and they'd be totally fine. They'd keep for six months. Um, <laughs> so my question to you two, though, how long are you comfortable <laughs> leaving the fridge door open? 
Because I didn't think um, Dion was driving at anything I, in particular. <laughs> Josh, I think I'd I'd frighten you when in my last place I um often would turn around whilst cooking and chopping ingredients and see that the fridge door was still open. Oh. And I, I'd say that it would have been about we didn't have one of the fridges. We weren't privileged enough to have yeah. one of the fridges that would play a little jingle to remind us to close the door. But I would say on average, uh, I would to be honest, on average, it's gotta be like five seconds because more often than not, I'm getting one thing from the fridge. But if I'm making multiple trips, yeah, 30 seconds, Josh. Hey, can I can I ask you a quick question? Sorry, just to intervene. Um, what was your what <laughs> focusing on fridges? What was your fridge like? Do you have very vivid memories memories of your fridge as a child? <laughs> I just have very vivid memories of my freezer that we had to defrost them. Did you guys have to defrost? Yeah. How good was defrosting? That was such that was such good fun. You get all the little great trays, let it drip down yeah, overnight. Just put a pot of boiling water in there, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. That's how much yeah. you did? To speed it up, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. But Josh, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're concerned about leaving the fridge door open and you don't think that the gases are going to have a problem with you putting boiling water in the fridge? Oh, when it's you off? turn it off it's to off. defrost it's, it. Yeah, but it's gas. <laughs> gas. That's my argument. <laughs> What's gas? I don't know. There's yeah, gas noise. in there's, there's gases in the fridge. That's why you're not meant to transport fridges um, horizontally. Uh, you have to do it vertically. No, it, no, no, you're thinking of the – is it the Freon? Is that what you're thinking of? Freon factor. <laughs> <laughs> I think, though, with the fridges, I remember our, our family fridge. I remember it having rubbish seals. That's a, that's a strong childhood memory. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fridge yeah, with totally yeah. seals. It's and oh. it's so easy to get seals replaced as well, and people are so reluctant to do it. Why are you so reluctant to get? Just get them done. Just get them done. Just get roof seal to do it. <laughs> <laughs> do they do all sorts of seals? Is just roofs? No, I well, think it's <laughs> it's in the name. It's just roof. The seal isn't about the ceiling. That's the <laughs> that's the character. That's the, that's the singer. He comes and does your roof tiling. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! So, um, so previously, um, uh, we've we've sort of looked at how best to emulate certain sounds, whether it's from our childhood, whether it's from pop culture. And the first one we did, first one we tried to recreate. We sort of did, tried to do the most realistic recreation of Tim the Toolman Taylor from Home Improvement doing his famous grunt sound. And um, uh, given we'll be taking a little break from Patchwork, we thought we'd return to our roots. <laughs> we didn't actually think about this before, but another 90s, um, I guess, <laughs> reference, another recreation. Um, thank God I'm doing the intro for this because I'm not going to go first because it'll be an absolute car okay. crash. So the one mm. that we're doing is uh, from The Nanny. It's Fran Fine saying, Oh, Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> so we're all, go all going to have a shot at saying, oh, Mr. Sheffield. And the key um, for copycat is it's the most realistic recreation. That's what we're after. Yeah, that's right. Um, so who would like to go first? I think it's Josh's Christian. turn. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I right, think Christian. Okay. All right, Josh, you go first. Josh, I mean, I mean, usually you do okay first up, usually. I'm going to go happens. heavily off my... You know, I'm, I'm waiting for you guys to go, that was rubbish. <laughs> yeah, what yeah, we're I? waiting to say it too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mr. Sheffield. Nah, very Just, camp. Was... Very camp. <laughs> <laughs> I think I hug on the Sheffield oh, yeah. a bit too there long. Was a, there was lots of vibrato on it. Yeah. I don't yeah, remember too. Fran was... Fine having that good a singing voice. It was Christina Aguilera saying, oh, Mr. Yeah. Sheffield. <laughs> yeah, that's right. An impression of an impression. Uh, Dion, did you want to go next? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll go, I'll go next. I'll go a little bit off mic as well, like Josh did. <clears throat> and I'm going to close my eyes so I can really channel her. Annoying voice. Oh, Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> no, nah, I don't got know. The nose block. I don't know whether we can we we can allow AIDS. Shut in, up. In, <laughs> there's no there's no AIDS in in. It's just your raw voice, Dion. Do you oh, want to give I it another think, go? I yeah, don't I mind. Don't, I don't mind it. Oh, oh well, yeah, okay, fine. Do that. fine. Yeah, well, show us the, show us the terms and conditions, mate. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, yeah. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was very up and down, Christian. You went very high. You had great dynamics then. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I, think I, any of us were that good, to be honest. Yeah, no, I think we're all I think rubbish. Josh started well. I got the probably I got the right notes in there, but I was way off. Dion, I mean, you were probably the closest. No, but no. Dion God. sounded too much like a caricature. That didn't sound like what she sounded like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, if, if we're looking at the YouTube chat, it's pretty clear that yeah. Christian has won. Although Daniel says that Josh is pretty good, but yeah, Christian, you seem to be the front runner. Someone asked whether you can hear the original. Yeah, I think we will play the original. We won't be able to play it for uh, YouTube Live, but I think we will be able to play it right after this. Yeah. Now, Josh, I know you raised this before, but... You have been very reluctant to tell a story that Dion has been dying to hear on this podcast. Yep. You think it has no legs. I've never heard it, <laughs> but I'm desperate to hear it because of how excited Dion gets about you telling this particular story. It's entirely it's, uninteresting. It's 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 the it's like my favorite story that I haven't heard in its entirety. I know there's not a lot of those categorization of stories, but it's 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 amazing. Anyway, Josh, I thought you'd tell a little bit of a story of your childhood, so so I'd like you to kick it off. <laughs> so, what it was, and I'm sorry if this is I'm anticipating this to be as unremarkable to other people as I find it unremarkable. As a child, we would go with my grandparents, and we would drive in the combi van, and we would sit at Riversdale station train station and watch the trains and that was an afternoon activity and we'd have we'd have a packed lunch in a little plastic bag and you'd sit in the, in the back seat of the combi and the it had two railway crossings for each side of the station the, the traffic so you'd hear the ding 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 going off and you'd see a few trains go past and that was a great afternoon that is so funny. So to pa to paint a picture, Riversdale Station. It sounds like it's hours out of Melbourne. It's no. it's it's probably eight minutes from the city. <laughs> yeah. um, and these are normal electric trains. There's nothing interesting about these trains. But I just love the idea. I love the excitement that surrounds that day. You know, you're getting a packed lunch together. Who's who's packing? <laughs> oh, what are we gonna have? It's kind of like it's just it's it's Vegemite the sandwich, worst. Mate. <laughs> that's what you're having. <laughs> Christian, what um, are your impressions? I'm I'm curious as to whether you guys were like, oh, let's go from one till three so we can see this line, that line, and that line coming through. Yeah. Oh, that's particularly busy at this time. Did you have favorite trains that you were watching? Did you know I the actual train? I uh. don't think we were like that heavy into trains. I don't think we were the kind of kids who had like schedules and stuff out and were like, oh, it's this one and oh, it's a he UH was, though. 40, you was know, he? whatever. Um, I don't think so. I think we just like the the trains going by as as a big as you know. It's not uncommon for kids to like big trucks and big train, you know, big heavy big heavy things. Like um, I, I think it was just the 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 train going past. It, we weren't like those uh, kind of obsessed kids of like, oh, let's go to the airport and watch the planes because a, a Boeing A three eighty is going off and all this well, kind of stuff. Actually, that, that's a really good that's a really good point because when I go to the airport. Usually, if I can, half an hour before, I'll I'll um drive down to the to where the where the planes fly over just before they hit the runway <laughs> on the and tarmac. I am, on, the, on the tarmac, and it's it's really interesting <laughs> because I will uh, like I'll do ex I won't take a packed lunch, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll do exactly what you did. But for me, the connotation of going to see some pop train <laughs> that's just an, <laughs> it's an electric train that's oh, eight minutes okay. in the city, I just think it's incredibly funny. Um, but Christian, so it kind of Sorry, you go, say, your your issue is with a domestic metro yes. metropolitan train line, a very that's standard right. station. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Because because when I think about it, when I go to the tarmac at Telmarine Airport, when I go just outside, if there's a plane that's overhead, then I know it's a domestic plane. It's like a seven three seven. I'm like, no, I don't really give a shit. But if it's an international <laughs> flight, if it's a if it's an A three eighty or something, I will absolutely lose my shit. I absolutely we love it. We have a qualification in the YouTube chat. It is an mm -hmm. Airbus, it, an, an oh, yes, Airbus A380, not a Boeing A380. Did I say Boeing A380? Oh, I I'm said so it, sorry. No. But I can, I, I can, I can understand the appeal of of watching trains and watching aeroplanes, um, because for me, when I'm watching a train go past. I tend to really lock. I try to lock on a face that I can see going past quite quickly. Yeah. And, and it kind of unravels into that people watching. Like, what's that person going off to do? Where mm. are they going? What stop? Like, it, it's quite a, I, I find it quite relaxing. And I, and I can understand the appeal that way, Josh. 
it's quite it's quite interesting being on a train and having another train saddle up beside you as well and sort of peeking in and sort of going, I wonder what's going on or what's, what's going on in there. But just this opportunity, it's 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 an opportunity just to look around and like look at someone for 10 seconds and go, yeah, all right, I'm never going to see him again. This has been fun. There was this great fringe performance that was on quite a while ago and it was um, near one of the pubs that runs near Richmond Station. You could sit in the pub and watch the train and what it was, they the artist had picked particular trains And within each carriage of the train, it was a different step of the scene. So like the the carriage would go past and you'd watch it from the pub and see this sort of thing play out over six carriages. It's really great. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But like this, the reason why I wanted Josh to talk about this, one one of the reasons was it made me reflect on weird things that I like did with my folks or did with my grandparents. You might remember that... um, uh, when I was younger, my my parents used to take us to Chinese restaurants, and when my dad used to order soup, he used to ice for an, uh, ask for an ice bucket to um, to cool down the soup, which was one of the literally one of the highlights of my life. But the other thing was that um, I remembered that um that when <laughs> at the Dion, start could of you, a... could you please do his cough again or <laughs> clearing his throat? No, no, I can't because he might be watching. So I don't want to because I'm about to I'm about to 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 um to dig up a little bit again. more dirt as well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That's Right. Um, but the other thing that I remembered, like in terms of embarrassing things that my folks did, um, we <laughs> at the start of a meal, a Chinese meal, they used to put down prawn crackers on the, on the table, and um, and in my family, when they would arrive at the table, um, uh, they'd arrive sort of after we ordered sort of the food, the sort of the main meals, and my dad would ask them to take away the prawn crackers and bring them back at the end of the meal because he didn't want us filling up on the prawn crackers. And I just love now that my parents, if they're watching this or listening to this now, they're going, what was wrong with that? Like they, they filled themselves up. They filled themselves up. But I was wondering, do you guys have any other stuff? And that's the thing. I could only come up with that one prawn crackers example of my parents being like, but just thinking my parents are really weird. But do you guys have like any examples of things where your parents are like, what the hell are they doing? What were they doing back then? Um, I don't understand why they didn't let you fill up on the prawn crackers. Surely that's the free thing that you're getting. If you yeah. fill up on that, you'll eat less food later. Yeah, what? it was the idea that I wouldn't eat the food, though. I think that's what you're about why to say, is, Josh, right? Why is that such a desperate fear for parents? That, <laughs> yeah. that they'll fill, you'll fill up early. Have a Milky Way because it won't fill you up. Well, like, no, no, do you know what it is, though? <laughs> I reckon, <laughs> I reckon though, when, like, because we don't have any dependents, I think it must be really interesting having all your money spent by someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think, like, imagine that. Imagine, Josh, every time you go out for dinner, you have to pay for three other people. And I reckon you'd you'd be like, you know what? you never see that money back. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, exactly. You know what? You're going to eat this food, eat this fucking food, and take those fucking prawn crackers away as well. (laughs) (laughs) But I honestly think it's that. I think it's just that, that, um, and if there's food left over, like, you know what, food left over? My my parents weren't big. What were your parents like in terms of having food left over on the plate? Were they big on that stuff? Or they were like, just whatever, just chuck it out at the end of the meal. We never um, ate out much, but I think generally it was, it was, you'd finish, you'd, 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 you'd always strive to finish your meal. That was always important. Everything that was, should be finished. I think that was, that was the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. I think that's quite a common thing for families, right? Is it's whatever's on your plate gets eaten. Uh, stop being fussy. I think, I think for us, we weren't allowed to be fussy. It was a case of clean your plate up. Yeah. And Christian did it with a tea towel. <laughs> yeah. Um, I rem- Oh, sorry, you go, Christian. I, I remember that um, my something that my mum used to do um, was she used to dress me as like a full character um, quite often. So I would be dressed full like character. a like I have a I have a, I'll fi- I will find it. I have a professional photo photo shoot of oh. me dressed as a sailor. Oh <laughs> please! A bit what, often what I was. Oh, uh, oh, Josh! Very camp night, roaring twenties sailor. <laughs> oh my like God! Buster Blues in real life. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, mum and son. Okay, so do you think there was a part of your mum at the time that was like, "Hey, this is going to be really fucking funny in a, Why in like, a couple of you? years' time"? Why wouldn't you? Because no one questions what a child is wearing. A yeah. child can wear. A child could literally be wrapped in the most comfortable carpet ever and then and then you put a, a wrap of sticky tape around them and yeah. roll them down the street and people go that's an adorable thing for a baby to wear you do that as an adult and you're stared at 
<laughs> yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Like one day when I have kids, I'm going to I'm gonna dress them up like idiots. Like it's a great opportunity. 15 years, make them look like absolute tossers. Can I ask, are you going to are you gonna dress them up in very itchy woolen jumpers? Because oh, I know- used to cop an itchy woolen jumper and it was hell. My, oh my, br- my brother-in-law cannot hear the word wool, cannot see woolen fabric without reacting with a shudder like you just did, yeah. Josh, because of the torment of wearing wool as a child. Oh my so God. Itchy. Wait, what the hell happened? What what sort of wool? What, like, was it not, like alpaca wool or steel wool? <laughs> 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 All right, Josh, time to the dishes. Chuck it in the sink. <laughs> yeah, it was just kids in the sink. <laughs> It was it was crazy. Like I just oh, remember Josh so just, strong. Josh just bypassed the um the interlude sound. He's just pushing yeah. on. I just remember it was so it was so strong that uh, the drive to wear. You did you have something similar, Christian, or not? What's that? What's With that? Woolen the, the... jumpers, itchy woolen oh, jumpers. Absolute, absolute, and I think it's, it was... the, it's the most bizarre choice for a parent to make to say, yeah, wear this, even though I know that it's incredibly uncomfortable. Surely, as a child, <laughs> the the point is. Let's just give them free movement. They're going to get it dirty. They're going to need to be grubby and, and flexible. Do you know what? I've got, I've got a bone to pick. I've got a bone to pick with wool. i got a bone to pick. So the other week, I bought some woolen socks, and I spent heaps on them, and they have a lifetime guarantee. If ever you get a hole in them, at any point, you don't need a receipt. You can go back, and you can exchange them and get a free pair of socks. These socks, they're shit. Oh. They're, sh- they're shit because they're they're completely merino wool. My feet are freezing all the time, and apparently, my bone to pick with wool is that wool is apparently good at retaining heat. Retaining heat is one thing, but making heat is another. And I really need a substance out there ca- that can make heat or store heat. I tell you what, you need. To, I tell you what, you need down a little fan heater by your feet. <laughs> I, I remember when we used to do caving in high school on camps and whatever, it was always like, make sure you wear wool because wool gets wet and it stays warm. And yeah. that was the big thing about wool. That was the big, well, you know what stays wet and st- and, and doesn't get wet? <laughs> Sorry, you know what doesn't get wet? Like non, like waterproof material. Why didn't they say that? <laughs> <laughs> Just wear that instead. That'll work. I think my biggest issue, right, is that you're wearing short sleeve things underneath. So yeah, yeah, you just yeah, huge. full exposure, full exposure. Yep, yep, for sure. <laughs> that, that's our comeuppance from our producer. <laughs> um, and, and he's force fed that to us like children. And I guess that means we'll segue into a little segment we like to call nursery rhymes. We haven't done this for a very long time, basically what's involved with this is that we have each gone away, made up a nursery rhyme, and we've also found a nursery rhyme that is real. What we're going to do is read each other the real one and the fake one, and we'll have to guess which is real or fake. Um, Josh, may I ask that you lead this? Yeah. Can, sure. can I just say? Can I just say? Just before you, this this is real. We haven't done this in such a long time. This is really one of my favorite favorite segments. It's a big bumper episode I've got for you guys. We've included this in. I'm really looking forward to this. We've prepared one that one that is nonsensical and one that's real. Josh, go for it. Not nonsensical. My, no, no, no. I've got two great. I've got two yeah. great nursery rides for you guys. Two great nursery rides. Here's Good. the first one. <clears throat> Are you sleeping? <laughs> Are you sleeping, brother John? Brother John. Morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong. Ding, ding, dong. So that's one. And here's the second one. This is going to be easy. Little baby boy, time to wake. Mr. Sun is shining, time to wake. Mr. Sun shines bright. Mr. Sun shines light. Little baby boy, time to wake. No, Josh. No yeah, way. No. no way. Do you know what the giveaway was, Josh? It what? always is the giveaway. It's little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change mine very quickly. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I'm judging it now. All right. So what's the guess? Was a uh, fat squirrel. <laughs> brother, brother John <laughs> sleeping or a uh, little baby boy side is shining. What's real and what's fake? Um, Fake was the, oh, hang on. Let me know. First one or think. second one? I fake think was the, the first one. No, fake was the second one. I think real was the second one. 
Oh, so Bacon. death was the first one. So you think? Are you so Christian thinks the first one? Are you sleeping, brother John? Was fake. Yes. Christian thinks that one. Oh, sorry, Dion thinks that one was real. Yes. Is that where yes. we're at. Yes. Yeah. Well, great. I split you. So go you go. Dion is correct. The first one was real. Oh. The second one about Mr. Sun. That's completely exactly made up. I thought you'd try to bamboozle us with a bit of like old timey wording, like brother John. <laughs> <laughs> All if right. I could come up with a brother John, mate. Oh. Uh, yeah, all right. I'll go next, okay? This is called Hickety Pickety. Easy. <laughs> Wait. Uh, Hickety Pickety, my black hen. She lays eggs for gentlemen. Sometimes nine, sometimes ten. Hickety pickety, my black hen. Okay. The second is looking for shoes. <laughs> Can't find my shoes, very loudly I said. Can't find my shoes, they're bright and red. Can't find my shoes, time to use my head. Just found my shoes. They were under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> no. Second one's fake. Second, second one has fake. to be fake. Second one has to be fake. The second one is fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I thought I did better. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Music, please. <laughs> okay, my first one is The Missing Button by Genevieve Pietti. Betty put on her shoes and her new pink petticoat. Alas, something was amiss. Oh no, a button is missing from my pink petticoat. Betty searched under the bed, under the sink, and even in her shoes. But Betty couldn't find her missing button. I found it, her mother said. You dropped it in my sewing box. Little Betty had forgotten she had given it to her mother. Her mother stitched the missing button on Betty's pink petticoat, and Betty was happy again. <laughs> Dion, I, I think you forgot the patch word of the day. <laughs> I, know. I was reading it. I was going to see it in a nursery rhyme. Um, and then uh, second one is Miss Polly had a dolly. Miss Polly had a dolly who was sick, sick, sick. So she phoned her doctor to be quick, quick, quick. The doctor came out with his bag and hat and knocked at the door with a rat tat tat. He looked at the dolly and shook his head and said, Miss Polly... Put her straight to bed. He wrote a pad for a pill, pill, pill. I'll be in the back. I'll be back in the morning with my bill, bill, bill. It's an American Jesus. doctor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, here you go, Christian. Considering Dion obviously doesn't know what a what a nursery rhyme <laughs> is, <laughs> I'm gonna go with the first one was written by you. Do I? I'm I'm pretty certain I I know the second one, so I think that's that's definitely real. <laughs> the second one. <laughs> Yeah, first one's fake is written by me. It wasn't an answer, right? <laughs> how how is it how is it that you found the second one and was like, oh mine doesn't need to rhyme? I don't know. I just I was I felt I, previously they've come so so um like easily to me. Can I just say when I started writing one before, this is the first these are the first two lines and then I abandoned it. This is this is this is meant to be the nursery rhyme that I was gonna write. Farmer Joe was an early riser. His medication was made by Pfizer. <laughs> God, what a bumper, bumper show. Um, so I guess that the last thing I want to talk about, oh my God, this has been going for four hours, um, was that uh, we're, we're going to play um, What's Your Favourite? And this week, um, we're not going to sing Favourite, Tell Me What's Your Favourite, but I'm just going to ask you guys, really, what is your favourite floor? <laughs> Wait, floor um, or floor? Flo <laughs> floor you mean with a type double. of floor. No, type actually, of flooring. Yeah, that could still have dual meaning though. Maybe start talking about it and the listeners will, will sort of gather an understanding of what floor I actually mean. <laughs> um my do you want me to kick this off, Dion? Yeah, sure. So so my my favorite type of flooring. Now I now I took a I took a, a mult like a, a multiple approach to like how I wanted to grade the type of flooring. And I judged the flooring on on aesthetics. Yep. On the sensation, yep. and, and and that's that's both touch, that's that smell, that's that's taste, taste, oh, <laughs> taste, um, 
and then, and then also the maintenance of, of, of that floor. Yep. Um, yep. So oh, the flooring that I've picked is freshly cut grass. <laughs> <laughs> that is so strange. Uh, freshly cut grass is my favorite flooring because <clears throat> not only does it have, I think the most operative thing is the sensation. We all are very familiar with the smell of freshly cut grass. We know the feel underfoot of freshly cut grass, but also, but also the color, the spectacle, the vibrant green. In 2017, <laughs> Pantone named this green the color of the year. <laughs> really? 2017? Yes. Can I yes. can I just say, Christian, if you were having a go at me before about what a nursery that, that I don't know what a nursery rhyme is, what about I have a go at you for not knowing what a floor is? <laughs> Sorry, Dion, define floor to me. <laughs> interior. House floor, interior. Interior. Thank you so much. Well, Sorry. Christian, where was the last oh, is that Sorry. is that at Marvel Stadium where where the is the roof is the roof there, Christian? Is the roof <laughs> that, that's actually that's actually a shot from the MCG. Um, <laughs> if you just change if you change the camera angle a little bit there, you'll actually see what's playing live on the screen. Oh, yeah, let's have a look. Um, Those on YouTube, yeah, yeah. Yeah. screen. There you go. Um, yeah, so so my favourite is freshly cut grass. Um, okay, what, what do you I, think I, when you spill something on freshly cut grass? Is that a good experience? Spilling something on freshly cut grass? You have to worry about it, Josh. And the best thing about freshly cut grass is that when it's cut, it looks its best, and you can always return it to that state just by cutting it again. It's like getting a haircut, but for grass. <laughs> <laughs> what about when it dries out and, and you get a bit of a dead patch? What happens then? How, how are you fixing that? With, fre Genius. With, with freshly cut grass. Good irrigation, Josh. Okay. Do you, reckon, do you reckon when they cut freshly cut grass, they ask the grass if they want any product in it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I don't get? How do they get that weird cross hatch? On the on the on the football fields. Oh mate, the that's grounds. that that's another podcast. That that yeah, that, that's a whole other <laughs> That can't be this. We can't we can't keep on doing the science stuff. It doesn't work. I right, said, so Dio, what's your favorite flooring? Oh uh, look, my favorite flooring, I didn't have to think about this for too long at all. At all. My favorite, favorite flooring is when you go into an old house and you've let's say you're renting the house or you've just bought the house and you pull up the carpet. And there's good hardwood timber yeah. floors. Uh, yeah, yeah. There is nothing better. That's a, a beautiful floor. It, it is. It, it's a. It's a. It's stunning. stunning. And I don't. It's stunning. Know, I don't know what it is. It's so. It's it like you don't have to clip it. You don't have to put product in it. It's so good, Josh. All I heard you say then was no. I don't <laughs> like a a cold hardwood floor. Oh, it's and just, a cold hardwood floor is the <laughs> best. <laughs> Great, right? I don't like it. My memory, my during <laughs> memories of cold hardwood floors is freezing in winter time. Yeah. And it's loud, it's so loud, it's echoing around the house. No, but like solid timber, it is so, so beautiful. It's like oh. the beauty of it just displaces like how difficult it is to, whether it's difficult to clean or whether there's, you know, um, little um, tacks that <laughs> result in you take, getting toes taken off your feet. Um, it's like, it's just, it's absolutely stunning. And we can see, there we go. We can see resounding in the YouTube chat. Hardwood floor wins. I didn't so, win the um the so copycat, but hardwood floor wins. So you've really honed in on, this, on the aesthetics of your favorite floor. Oh, uh, it's seriously, it just, it, Christian, what do you think? Like the, the oh, uh, I'm if, with you. No, I'm with you, Dion. All the way, hardwood floor. If, if I have read the brief of this segment wrong, then I would have picked a very light hardwood floor. Uh, the, it is in terms of aesthetics, I would, I mean, it's comparable with concrete slab for me, but, oh. but a hardwood floor, just the, the sound of, of, of tiptoeing on a hardwood floor oh. reminds me of Christmas, the, the, the <laughs> smell, the smell of freshly cut hardwood floor. <laughs> Christian, has there ever been more anticipation for Josh's response? Aren't you just interested? Because it's obviously not hardwood floor or grass. Yeah, um, no. Aren't you just aren't you just hanging off what Josh has to say? Josh, to what's your favourite floor? To be honest, Josh, if you go anywhere near carpet, I am going to tear <laughs> you to pieces. Here we go. So I've gone for a what I consider a great all-rounder. <laughs> I'm going for a linoleum floor. Some oh, lino. Oh, that is shit. Shocking. Oh, that is shocking. Mr. That Practical. Was, that was 100% at your grandparents' place before you set off to watch the trains. <laughs> I'll tell you what I love about it. 
It's easy to clean. You spill some spag bowl on the floor. Get it up. Mop it up. Easy. You can mop that floor easily. It's yeah. very clean. Do, do you know how good hardwood floor is? You spill spag bowl on it and it yep. looks better. Yeah. And Leon, give him a chance. So you're cl- <laughs> we're on par for cleaning, mate. We're on par for cleaning. Yep. I'll give you that for your hardwood. Yep. Grass, is, grass is in the back. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> so the other thing I like, it's a little bit soft. It's got a bit of sponge to it. When you're tiptoeing through that for Christmas, oh, yeah. ooh, doesn't it feel great? It's not freezing cold in winter. When you come through that on a cold winter's morning, it's not icy cold on your toes and you're not getting frostbite because of the floor. What happens, and when, what happens when it bubbles, Josh? It's not bubbling. Yeah. I've never had bubbling lino. No, nah, no. Nah, bubbling's not the problem. Josh, what about the look of it? It looks shocking. You can get all different kinds of designs. And it's quite, I found out, it's quite eco. It's like a... Um, it's made of natural things, not like vinyl. No, natural yeah, things. Mr. That, that, shut that, the fridge that, over here so I have yeah. a vino floor. <laughs> no, but that natural things argument, that last fell down when I went to buy bamboo underwear and I found out, oh, great, bamboo grows like grass. Oh, great. It costs, it, 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 an incredible amount of energy goes into uh, manufacturing bamboo. Thanks, bamboo. You okay. turned something into something that was so damn good. It was, you had such promise. You're like, grass. And then, yeah, no, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily work. But Josh, I get that clean, easy to clean, like easy to yeah, mop. I it's like a that. It's soft. It's a bit padded. It's good acoustics in there. I think it's, it's a great, it might not be the most aesthetically, it might not have the, the high price tag of your polished wood floors or your polished concrete or your interior grass. Yeah. But it's the underdog it's a good Australian all rounder. Floor. It is a good all rounder. And I think it, it ticks a lot of boxes for me. And, and for me, that's, uh, that's why Lino is my favorite floor. <laughs> Well, on, on, on that note, I was actually going to go, I was going to ask you if you had any second or third places, Christian, you probably just had different variants of grass. Um, <laughs> but, but, um, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to go for a break for about five minutes now. And, um, this is, uh, your opportunity, you in the YouTube chat, it's your opportunity to write down your really goods and, um, yeah, hopefully you get a chance to, uh, to, to hear it read uh, on the, on air now. Also, also, if you haven't yet mentioned why you're here and you should know by now, Make sure to mention it in the YouTube chat, for you might just be in the running. You know what we're talking about. We'll see you in a few minutes.
YouTube live uh, and getting those really goods in. We do love hearing your really goods. And this week, you know what Linda Dolan thinks is really good? When you're controlling the aux cord and you notice someone Shazam a song that you chose. Really good. Really good. Really good. And you know what Patrick Negus thinks is really good? Getting a, you have a new message in your MyGov inbox message, and it turns out to be something benign. <laughs> really, good. <laughs> really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. And you know what Caitlin Barlow Groom thinks is really good? When you forgot you put your washing on, but your flatmates have put it in the dryer for you. Oh, really, really, good. Good. really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. You know what? Really, really good. <laughs> Oh, yes. Thank you so much for listening to Welcome to Patchwork for another week. Um, we flagged at the top of the show that we'll be taking uh, a little bit of a, sort of a break um, for, from Patchwork for a little while. Um, Josh, maybe I'll throw it over to you to sort of explain why we've taken this course of action. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're taking a bit of break. Um, it's just, as I'm sure a lot of you are experiencing here in, in Australia, um, COVID's been pretty tough for, for a lot of people. Um, I know me personally have struggled a bit with it. Um, these guys have been really supportive and helping me through that. Uh, it's been really difficult, but um, if you guys are struggling, make sure you reach out to your friends um, and they can help you through it. Um, but yeah, we're taking a bit of a break just to sort of get a hold on everything again, um, but really love doing the show and really producing this stuff for you guys. Um, so we're hoping to get back to it as, as, as soon as we can. Yeah, and we'll be communicating with Patreons um, during the week as to sort of what what we'll um, what we'll do with you guys. But yeah, we really appreciate everyone's support and and everyone coming along to our YouTube lives. It's 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 been a massive help. But yeah, we hope everyone out there was sort of tried to not talk about um, sort of what's happening in the world too much to give everyone a little bit of a distraction and and I guess a distraction for ourselves as well in terms of everything that's happening. But uh, hopefully everything will settle down um, really soon. But um, yeah, bear with us while we go on a break. But um, but yeah, of course on social media you can hit us up. Whenever you like, you, we've got Instagram, um, Facebook, and, and Twitter. Um, we will uh, always be there. Christian, is there anything else you would like to add at all, putting you on the spot? Um, well, I mean, it's just great to have you both with me, really. I, I guess that's the final thing that I'd like to add for this episode before we throw to the patches. No, of course, someone needs to win the big prize. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who it could be, but it seems as though everyone is here because of the buzz of the big prize. Yeah, so, so for those big who prize don't, buzz. So those who don't know what the big prize was, Christian got on our Instagram. And if you're if you're listening to this podcast and you're not on our Instagram account, I don't post funny shit. Josh doesn't post anything. Christian posts the funniest stuff on Instagram. So please search for Welcome to Patchwork. But um Christian, uh, I'm can I do you, would you mind if I award uh, the big prize to someone, Christian, even though do we is there a big prize, Christian? <laughs> <laughs> um, up until about four minutes ago, <laughs> there wasn't a big prize, but now there is a huge prize. Oh. Okay. So the huge prize, I'm going to give it to someone who's showed up to our YouTube chat and you can all piss off after I've announced it because I know it's the only reason why you've <laughs> stuck around for this long, but I'm going to give it to Hannah Douglas because she wrote, um, do you know what's really good? When you don't even know what the big prize is, but you win it anyway. So congratulations, <laughs> Hannah, Doug Hannah Douglas. Hit us up on um, Instagram or Facebook or uh, or Twitter, um, and we're going to send you out a Welcome to Patchwork mug that all of you have been bloody wanting for too long, haven't you? But we're going to send you out one, Hannah. So if you're still around, um, yeah, uh, hit us up and we'll send you a big prize. I think that's what you had in mind, wasn't it, Christian? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just quickly as well, uh, some Game Boys news. Uh, we're doing a, a big special live stream for VCR Fest. Um, it's a, a, a digital festival that's run by Melbourne Fringe coming up at the start of August. We're on August 2nd. So we're doing a big special live stream for that. Um, and also we're doing our, our fortnightly live streams as well. Uh, just head to Game Boys Comedy. Uh, look for that on YouTube. And uh, it's a lot of fun, fun variety show. Christian's popped in a couple of times. It's been really yeah. nice. But yeah, uh, make sure you tune into that as well. All right, as we do every week, we sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. Josh, what patch did you sew in this week? Thank you, Dion. My patch this week is you at your local airport watching planes coming to land on the new hardwood runway. <laughs> right. Uh, right. Christian, what patch did you sew this week? <laughs> Thank you, Josh. This week, I sewed into my patch our favourite little host who was embarrassed the most. <laughs> <laughs> 
after we gave him a little roast for forgetting to make his segment rhyme. (laughs) And Dion, what did you sew into your patch this week? My patch this week is Christian on his hands and knees, ripping up the lino that Josh has laid in his house in favour of old x-ray films. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to Velcro the Patchwork for another week. We're going to be back um, very soon. Just get on our social media and we'll let you know. But in the meantime, I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.